Well, welcome back to what will be our last session uh, in our journey through Article 10 from the Manual of the Church of the Nazarene. So glad that you have been able to make this journey with me and I hope as we bring this to a conclusion that it will at least have gone some way to helping uh, develop your understanding of what is a very important part of our Christian experience. In this final uh, paragraph of uh, Article 10, we are looking at terms that have been given to the experience of entire sanctification. Once again, it's really important for us to recognize that entire sanctification is best understood in terms of an experience. Uh, there is a theological idea, there are ideals, there are um, uh, concepts and constructs that surround our understanding of entire sanctification. But at the end of the day, we are in fact talking about an experience with God and it is a, a relational experience with God. And as a result of that, there is something that actually happens in our lives that we can identify, that we can recognize, and that can be a very, very significant part of our on, on, ongoing journey through life. So let's have a look at these uh, terms that are being represented in this uh, final paragraph. This experience, entire sanctification, is also known by various terms representing the different phases, such as Christian perfection, perfect love, heart purity, the baptism with or infilling of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the blessing, and Christian holiness. All of these uh, phrases and ideas um, have been used to uh, give expression to uh, various understandings of what it is to be entirely sanctified. All of them have inadequacies, all of them have uh, people that disagree with using them, all of them have been uh, issues of contention across the years to one degree or another. Uh, but I think it's really important to recognize that because there is a proliferation of names and understandings, we can in fact uh, recognize that uh, something is happening in people's lives that is causing them to uh, give expression to that in these various terms. So let's have a look at the first uh, couple, Christian perfection, perfect love and heart purity. Probably of all the uh, terms, these have caused um, the most uh, reaction. Uh, the word perfection and purity um, come across as absolute terms and there is a very significant shift that needs to be made in order to be able to understand the experience of entire sanctification. And that shift is a shift in focus from um, our lives to uh, the reality of God and His grace. Maybe I could say that in, in this way, the inadequacies of our lives and the adequacy of God and His grace. And it is this shift that John Wesley made and that it is consistently represented in his writing. And so when we look at uh, the experience of entire sanctification, because it is something that happens within us, we are very often given to the kind of language and comparisons that represent changes in our lives from the time prior to entire sanctification to the time after. And while there, there is um, certainly legitimacy in that, because if it didn't actually do something in our lives, it would be uh, rather debatable as to whether or not we are talking about something legitimate. But the, the issue is that because it's something that happens in our lives, we, we tend to look at our lives in terms of the validation of our understanding of entire sanctification. And it's really, really important to understand that John Wesley, along with the, the best of theologians that have come along since, have recognized that human beings are, well, human. We're limited, we're inadequate, we're, we, we fail, we make mistakes, we um, misunderstand, we, uh, we are just plain incompetent in some areas. 
And all of these things can, can be, in fact, contexts in which uh, sin can enter into our lives. However, the shift that John Wesley made was a shift to recognising that God's grace is God's grace and it cannot be reduced down to our inadequacies. So, so he used the word Christian perfection because Jesus said, be ye perfect even as, he, as your Father in heaven is perfect. And John said, perfect love casts out all fear. And so because there was this use of the term perfect in, in Scripture, and it does mean complete, it does mean whole, it does mean um, uh, 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 reaching the goal. Because that is there, John Wesley felt it was, it was really important to get at what was being said. And, and how he did that was to recognize that we are talking about God's love and God's grace and what he does in our lives. So the issue here isn't our inadequacies, it's God's love. So when we talk about Christian perfection, remember we're talking about relational experience. We are talking about that which God does in our lives in terms of transforming them. That transformation then is lived out in, uh, in our lives and, and uh, our lives are inadequate. However, the shift, as we've been talking about in the past, is in our source of identity. It's in our understanding of ourselves. It is in who we really are and who we really belong to. And in order to come to that place, there is this complete surrender to God and to his love that allows his identity to become the source and center of our identity. And Christian perfection is reflecting on that place where we have come to a point of decision in our lives of complete abandonment to God and his love. And the perfection is in what God does in our lives, not in either the adequacy of our gift or in the uh, adequacy of our life um, lived after. However, the truth is because thou our hearts are transformed, that when our inadequacy impacts another, uh, we will um, be given to, uh, uh, we, we'll, we'll be given to um, attempting to put that right. Love would drive us to, to making that right. So that is Christian perfe perfection and perfect Perfect love, again, talks about the infilling of, of God's love in our life. Heart purity is the place where our heart has come to when we are, we are motivated primarily, if not singularly, by, uh, the, um, God, by God's identity being at the core of our identity. The baptism and the infilling of the Holy Spirit, we talked about that um, previously. The fullness of the blessing, in many ways, just describes completely that uh, that. Um, uh, joy that goes along with recognizing we have walked into an experience with God that is that is that is actually dealing with the with the center of our being and there's a genuine joy that goes along with that experience and finally Christian holiness is is simply reflecting on the fact that the life that we live from that point on is a life that is given to uh, given to God and and living out the values that he is pouring into our life and that is the best um, uh, understanding that we can have in terms of, of, of a human embracing of holiness. We live out the life of God in our, in our lives. And as we draw this to conclusion, let me just read, read the uh, addition, additional piece that is tacked on to the bottom of article 10 it's 10.1 i'm not going to spend a lot of time here it's all pretty self-explanatory but it talks about the difference between um, the life that's lived in in the maturity and the life that we we walk into in the in terms of the grace of god and there's a there's a distinction there's a there's a difference as we allow god's love that is at the core of our being to transform our psyche we begin increasingly to be able to live out of that place and that is the best reflection of maturity. We believe that there is a marked distinction between a pure heart and a mature character. The former is obtained in an instant, the result of entire sanctification. The latter is the result of growth in grace. We believe that the grace of entire sanctification 
includes the divine impulse, the urge to grow in, Christ, in grace as a Christ-like disciple. We have this urge to become increasingly like Christ. However, this impulse must be consciously nurtured and careful attention given to the requisites and processes of spiritual development and improvement in Christ-likeness uh, Christ -likeness of character and personality. So just because God has entirely sanctified our lives and given us this desire to become more Christ-like doesn't mean it's going to happen automatically. We have to nurture that. We have to develop that. Without such a purposeful endeavor, one's witness may be impaired and the grace itself frustrated and ultimately lost. It is possible to walk away from the experience of entire sanctification by simply ignoring the impulse that God puts in our life to walk towards him. Participating in the means of grace, especially the, fellow, the fellowship, disciplines and sacraments of the church, Believers grow in grace and in wholehearted love to God and neighbor. And in conclusion, let me say this, that as having been a part of the church all of my life and having recognized the way God has worked in my own life, I would have to say that the thing that I am most clearly able to identify is that simply being around a long time or having had an experience with God in the past doesn't keep us on the journey to Christ's likeness. There is a deliberate focus, commitment and embracing what is called here the means of grace because that's what John Wesley called it, the uh, sacraments, the being a part of the church, being part of the fellowship. It is these things that continually shape us and move us towards God's likeness. Well, thank you for being on this journey with me. I am uh, thrilled that we've had this opportunity to spend together. I'm going to do some more of these uh, videos going forward about uh, specific issues. Um, there may not, there may be a couple of weeks gap be before I uh, put another one together. But it is my intention to keep on uh, looking at key issues within the life of of our church as we move forward. Thanks once again. I hope you have a great week.